Hello, few. What the fuck? I'm on the sounding board again. Oh my god. I have got a jizz color paper behind me. Can't Mike afford a real set for me? Or is he just too busy eating away Wasteland TV's profits in production by stuffing his face? Can you believe our producer, that's all he does is stuff his face? I made two movies called Straight Out of Turlock, and they're basically about him eating. Or you just can't forgive a person for faking his death and being in hiding for two years. After all, is it my fault that I look like some dude that died a few months ago? No. I was here just as long as he was. Maybe even longer. Because my hair is still on my head, unlike his. So now they got me reviewing the new Star Wars trailer. Because no one else wanted to do it. Me, that doll guy, the host of the Granny Wrestling League. Can you believe that? The winner of the dance off on Wasteland TV versus 49 cents. No. I have to review something that. Wait a minute. I have no budget here. So if I have no budget. I have less animation than what I had when I was on TV on Modesto Public Access 2026. So, let's talk about Star Wars. We know it was created by George Lucas. Who cares? We know it was made by a guy from Modesto. Who cares? He hates Modesto. We know the movie is really old. We know Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher made a career on it. Who cares? So, let's look at the new and final installment, allegedly, to the Star Wars trilogy. The Rise of Skull Skywalker. Not Skullwalker. It would be a cooler name, because the movie's got a pretty dumbass name. So let's look at the trailer. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. Holy shit. If I was a Star Wars fan, I would have creamed my pants. Because J.J. Abrams has outdone himself. He has Action Jackson jumping over a TIE fighter. No, wait, that's a 10-year-old boy. No, wait, that's Ray. If you're into girls that like ten, that look like 10-year-old boys, 
this movie is for you. Oh, man, J.J. Abrams has outdone himself. It makes me want to cry inside. Okay, I guess I'll review the movie. Let's talk about what we saw in the trailer. We saw they're in a desert planet. Duh. They're always in desert planets. Duh. All the characters look like all the original characters from the original trilogy. Hmm. Lack of ideas? Maybe. Does this make George happy? I don't think so. Because after all, George had a vision. A vision of plagiarizing other sci-fi properties. Okay, I came out and said it. But let's look at some of the other aspects of the film. Like Lando. You think Lando would be able to afford new clothing? He's wearing the clothing from Solo Steel. Did he gamble away all his funds that he now has to use? All his clothes, and you're trying to figure out how he fits in them. From the solo film, we like to remember Princess Leia in her slave girl outfit. But we don't like to remember Princess Leia from these movies. And now, since the late Carrie Fisher passed away, like another actor we know named Luke Perry, they had to CGI her in. Or did she film all her parts? I don't care. But we like to remember the Slave Girl version. A lot of lonely fanboys busted a lot of nut on her. Probably more nut on her that can fill enough DA, D and A bags for a crime scene. But we're losing the track of what we're here to talk about. Star Wars. And the legacy that Star Wars has left. For me, I'm not into 10 year old boys, that, I mean, 10 girls that look like 10 year old boys. I'm into boobies. Let's pause for a minute and reflect on sci fi boobies. Jane Fonda in Barbarella. Classic. All the Roger Corman films with David Carradine had boobies. The Star Wars Holiday Special had boobies with nipples on it. And what does this series give us? A girl that looks like a 10 year old boy. But luckily, a plethora of cosplayers give us boobies. So let's enjoy this Star Wars montage of cosplaying boobies. And so, in the great vein of sci-fi boobies, 
Ray just doesn't cut it for me. Barbarella does. And these cosplayers are hot. They are really hot. But this is the sounding board, signing off.